So I have everything on this car I need to make it legal. Uh, I don't have backup lights yet. I'm gonna fix that today. I found out that the 2006 4T65 EHD has a W pin position. And if you look at the wiring diagrams for the 20 pin connector, that didn't show up until I believe 2009. I'll show a picture of that diagram here. And so it has a W pin and it uses a W pin for the neutral safety switch. So I've got the neutral safety switch figured out. That pin grounds when it's in park. So what I'm gonna do is wire my starter relay to ground through that pin. So the starter relay will not work unless it receives the ground and the ground will be from the W pin. Put a Chevy motor in the back of a Toyota Celica. It'll be fun, he said. Well, it is fun, but help me out a little bit with this channel. Make sure you like this video, share this video. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and leave a comment in the comment section. Just a thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what I'm doing right or wrong, but the comments help promote the video so more people see it. Thanks, I'm gonna crawl underneath of a dash and hook up this little green wire so I don't have to press a little button to get it out of park. Oh, now all I gotta do is figure out which switch, I mean, find the wire that goes to the brake lights so I can hook this into it. Should be a piece of cake. Backup lights, I don't know. I haven't figured out exactly where that signal comes from. Everything is wired to the transmission correctly. I can't find an output signal off the computer that gives, that'll give me backup lights right now. Uh, the internal mode switch does not have a pin for backup lights or for a actual reverse signal. So uh, we may just throw a switch on it somewhere else. My shifter does not have any switches in the shifter either. So I'll get backup lights somehow. Well, the air conditioning's humming away in the background. But we're gonna have to deal with that because it's hot out. What I've got to do is add a W pin to this connector down here so that I can get a signal for my start safety switch so it doesn't start in gear. I've only done that once or twice, but uh, it, it is startling when it happens because you don't think you left it in gear. Anyway, I'm gonna put a W pin in here. I'm gonna take one of the spare wires that I left in the harness. I guess I was thinking ahead on this and use that as a wire to run up to the starter relay inside the car. So uh, let's get started having some fun. I have a nice little wire that's kind of a greenish color right here that is actually marked uh, neutral safety switch and that runs up by the computer and fuse block and I have another little wire that's about the same color that has the pin still on the end for the 20 pin connector. Now I'm going to have to pierce a hole through this rubber. The seal on the back here needs a hole pierced in it and then I'll slide that pin in place and solder the wires together and we'll have a connection, hopefully. So I debated with myself about cleaning up this wiring harness and taping it all together and putting it inside a loom while the engine was out. And I said, you know, now's the time to do it because you're probably not gonna have the engine out for quite a while and it looks terrible. But I really wish I hadn't put it all in a loom right now because it is a little hard to work with. It would be nice if I had a little more slack to work with. And this wire is long enough to reach the connector, but I don't have the right connector to crimp on the end of it, so I'm gonna have to solder on a different wire. And you've seen people do bad soldering and heat shrink jobs before, so we'll just skip to putting the pin in. My theory is that with that wire through that rubber seal, I should be able to just push this pin down and follow that wire right through the rubber seal. Oh yeah, it seems to be working, sort of, a little bit. It's through the seal. Yeah, it's a little tight. A little bit too flexible to push through there. Come on. Oh, it's getting close. It's getting close. Oh, another 32nd of an inch and it probably will lock into place. There she goes, I just heard a click. I think that was a click anyway. Yep. 
All right, so I don't have the pin lock in place, but if you're real careful plugging these in, you can plug them in without any of the pins bending out of the way or misaligning. Anyway, I've been lucky enough to do it so far. Where do I throw this? All right, I have my test meter, hooked it up to power, and if this thing is actually working, I should get a tone. What? Power, ground, tone, no tone. Wait a minute, oh. No. What is going on? Oh, I hooked it to power. I'm supposed to hook it to ground to get a tone. There we go. Now, you can hear the tone. I'm going to try to turn around here and reach the shifter. Reverse, no tone. Neutral should have a tone. Yep. All right. So now all I have to do is finish taking off my uh, relay panel here and make sure I drop all the stuff down inside here so I can't find it. Well now, looks like I'm gonna have to run around and check my starter stuff. Nope, right there it is. There's my ground for starter. So that ground needs to just go to, Let's shut that off a minute. That ground just needs to go to this wire. And what I have right now is, it's in reverse right now. Starter will activate, it's in drive. Starter will activate. We're gonna fix that in a few seconds. Starter relay right here in the bottom corner. This is my temporary power wire for that relay I've got back there. Anyway, so this starter relay is grounded with this wire right here that runs over to this ground terminal. So I'm gonna take this ground wire and hook it to my starter safety switch. Just like that. We're just gonna do this quick and easy and short and, all right, we'll cut it off about that long. Strip the end of this wire back a ways. And uh, we're just gonna do it with a little twisty together for right now. That should stay together. Now let's give it a test. Neutral. We have starter. Drive, no starter. All right, I like that. Back to park. All right, we got that. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is wire this little button up on the side. This little button is actually a solenoid that pulls in to allow it to come out of park and I've got to wire that to the brake system. So uh, I guess I'll do that now because it needs to be done. I'm tired of pressing that little button. For the longest time, the connector for this was hanging around the shifter, but every time you'd pull the shifter back, it would hang up on this, so I don't know what I did with that loop of wire. Gotta go hunting now. It's not in there. Well, I found my wire that plugs into this plug, and if there's anything I can't stand, it's a liar. And the worst kind of a liar is a guy who lies to himself. And I just lied to myself because this plug has like five pins in it. I thought that connector was only a two pin connector for just that. Turns out I might have the switches I need for uh, backup lights inside the uh, shifter here. So all I gotta do is get this untangled and we'll move on.
yeah, don't try to untangle wires while you're looking at a camera. So I've got it plugged in to my wiring harness and uh, well, I could look up the wiring diagrams, but to be perfectly honest, I'm tired of doing research on this project. So let's see what we got. We're in drive, so we shouldn't really have too much continuity on any of these pins, except for the one. All right, which one does the solenoid? We got nothing here, all right. Let's try putting it in reverse and see if we've got anything. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Nope. All right, so while I play with these wires here, uh, go get yourself a cup of coffee or something or whatever. Uh, Hmm. If I'm going to get backup lights out of this thing, one of these should have continuity to something. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We got a little something, something there. Well... Well, it looks like I'm going to be doing some research again. Hmm. Well, that didn't take long to find if this is the right uh, wiring diagram. We do not have anything for reverse. All right, I've got it plugged back in. I've got my ground hooked to a ground over here. And I've got my little green wire stripped back a little bit so I can get some power stuck in park. I'm just going to tap into this right here for some power. And it works. Now I just have to wire this into the brake light switch so that you have to press the brakes in order for it to unlock. That should work, I hope. All I have to do now, where's that wire? All I have to do now is find the wire that goes to the brake lights so I can hook this into it. Should be a piece of cake. Once I realized that even though this wasn't an automatic transmission car originally, it would have the wiring harness in it for the automatic transmission. Made it a whole lot easier to hook things up. The reason I wired it the way it is is because I noticed the release solenoid on the shifter was getting hot. Wiring it the way I did makes it so the only time that the release solenoid will be powered is when your foot is on the brake and the transmission lever is in park. That keeps it from getting hot. Well, we have all our players. We have our brake pedal. We have our shifter, which locks in park. Step on the brake, shifter comes out of park. No more pushing the little button on the side. I like it. But we still don't have any backup lights. Perhaps I'll figure that out at a later date. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. And if you weren't happy with today's episode, see the man at the ticket booth. He'll cheerfully refund your money.